Welcome to episode 9 of live.withcode.uk. Um, thank you to everybody who submitted some feedback as one of the activities for last week, um, particularly the comments about K-Pride. I can send those off to Nesta, which means I can get some funding to keep on providing the prizes each week. And talking about prizes, well done to Jonathan from Fulford. Uh, nice to reclaim the winner's prize um, for Fulford School. Well done. Um, so you should get your prize. Um, I'll send that off in the post as soon as I can. This week you voted for pixel art and images, so quite excited about this week's activity. Um, I record the new challenges on a Wednesday um, and today is Teacher Appreciation Day. So we are going to um, make a little thank you note in Python that you can send to a teacher who supported you through remote learning. Or remember, parents or carers are currently teachers, so they're the ones who have to tolerate um, our grumpy moods as we're working from home. Um, so you can share this as a thank you um, to a parent instead. So let's get started. Um, we're going to import a couple of um, modules and libraries to get started. We're going to need one um, that only works in Create with Code, um, and that's uh, used to display images. We're going to use um, uh, arrays and lists quite a lot today, uh, and this module just allows you to turn, array, turn an array or a list of data into an image. We're going to um, generate some random colors, uh, and we're going to need to slow our um, animation down, so we're going to need to access time as well. Okay, so first of all, we need to talk about what um, uh, what lists are and how to display them as images, how to get computers to understand them. So we're going to make an array, sorry, a list called image, um, and we're going to put some numbers in, just some binary zeros and ones. And if we display that list, it just displays them as a list. So in Python, square brackets means a list. Now you can. This is a one-dimensional. Um, list because we can access just one direction, one dimension in here. So if we said image 0 equals 0, then it changes the first item from a 1 to a 0. And we've only got one number that we can change in here. A two-dimensional list means we've now got a list of lists. So if we think of an image now as being like a grid of pixels. Um, so let's change it to 0 here. Uh, and I'll copy and paste this a couple of times. Um, so, and I'm just going to move that one across each time. So we're going to have a four by four grid of pixels, um, and it's a one here. And notice the syntax, the rules of the language here. Um, we have square brackets around the edge. That's an outer list, and then square brackets inside. So this is a list, and this is a list of lists. So. We've got the list of lists here, a two-dimensional list. We call it two-dimensional because now there's two dimensions, there's two directions, there's y and there's x. So we have to specify two indices, two numbers in here. So if I want to change this value, the row is the first square bracket and the column is the second one. And I can set that to, say, a 1. OK, that's all very well and good, but how does that relate to images? Um, well, using this module that we've imported, um, we can make a special um, image object um, with code dot image um, and then we can say i dot draw and throw some pixel data at it and it should display it as a black and white image. Um, so you can tweak and change the code here and see the pixels changing. Um, or if you wanted to, you can add an extra parameter. I'm going to put false in here, which just gets rid of the grid lines, which might be useful a little bit later on. OK, so at this point you could pause and create your own 2D um, uh, list for your own kind of smiley face in black and white. But it would be much more fun to start with a colour image and then get the pixel data. So I'm going to save this as an image. Um, and then we're going to use this tool. I'll just copy and paste it in here so you can access it later, um, which allows you to um, import an image. So you can see I've done this before. I'm going to drag it in here. You can see the image. Um, we can change some settings. Now, um, Python understands, or computers understand images by breaking them down into pixels. So you can see they can be black and white um, with zeros and ones, and you can change the threshold to see how they appear. And you can see the pixel data is just zeros and ones. Um, or we can have grayscale, where each pixel is now not just a zero or one, but a number between zero and 255. So 255 is white, which means full on light on. And then if there's a zero, here we go, that's black. That means the light is switched off. 
or more usefully for, to us, we're going to go RGB for red, green, and blue. And that means every pixel is now a list of um, three values, red, green, and blue. So actually, we've now got a three-dimensional list, which is rather confusing. Um, it's a list of lists of lists. I'll paste it in, and let's see what happens. So um, each of these um, lists contains red, green, and blue. And then we've got 32 of them going across in a row, and then 32 um, lists of lists of lists going down. Now, if I include this in the file like this, when we do the typing challenge, it's going to be a nightmare typing all of these numbers. Um, so I'm going to remove them, select them, and then press Control and Cut. Sorry, Control and X to cut. And I'm going to paste them into a new file. So you click the plus and then paste them in here. If you're just copying and pasting from here, you just don't need the final three lines. Um, so I've now got um, the image data called data. Um, which when we run it now, we won't be able to find data because it's in another file. So in order to access it, we just need to go from images, the name of the file, import data, and we can now access it. Fab. Okay, so that's okay. Um, we can put on um, some um, a thank you message. So we can say print thank you, happy teacher appreciation day, something like that. Um, and it's always a good idea to say where you get your um, sources from. Um, so image source. Uh, there we go. Um, but what I'd like to do is find every pixel that's white and replace it with a, an animated color, random pixel data. So we're going to do some image processing in Python, <laughs> if we can. How are we? Seven minutes so far. We've got time for this. I think we can do it. So first of all, um, we are going to iterate through every pixel in our image data. So we're going to use some for loops. For y in range 32, there's 32 pixels going down. And then an inner loop nested inside for x in range 32. Now I'm going to say data y x. So that says which pixel we're going to change is equal to and then we want to set it to a value. Now I'm going to make a constant for this. I'm going to say background. Remember in Python, constants are in capital letters. And we're going to make um, the background be black. So you switch all the lights off. You switch the red lights off, the green lights off, and the blue lights off, which means black. If you wanted white, you'd have 255, 255, 255. So we can refer to that in here. So that just means every pixel is now black. We don't really want that. Um, we want to be able to check and see um, what the value is and only change it um, if necessary. So we can say if data at that position is currently equal to, so two equal signs to test the value, one equal sign to set the value, if it's equal to white, 255, 255, 255, only then do we change the background color. And then you can have this to whatever you want. So if you want it to be red, We'll change the colour. So it's like a magic wand um, in Photoshop done in Python. Um, how are we doing for time? Eight minutes. Yeah, we've got time to animate it. It's exciting. Um, so this time, rather than changing the data in this file here, we're going to leave that so we can refer to it as much as we want. And we're going to make a new image. So we're going to say images an empty list. Then we're going to make another nested loop for y in range 32 and for x in range um, 32, which means we're going to iterate through every column and we're going to iterate for every row, every column for every row as well. And then we're going to make a new list called row as an empty list. And for every pixel going across, we're going to add, so append means add to a list in Python. Um, we're going to add the background color to our row. And then once we've finished going through every pixel going across, we're going to add that row, which will now contain 32 pixels of this color. We're going to add that to our empty image list. So we go image.append um, row. OK, that doesn't look very exciting yet. All I'll do is change it so it displays this image data. So it should just be all red. So we've got 32 times 32, loads of pixels all colored in here. Why did we bother doing that? Well, 
we're going to say if the image data is white then we're going to change this one to the background um, otherwise we're um, going to how can we do this uh, let's see RGB we're going to get the red green and blue values from our smiley face that we read from a file then we can say if R is we'll do some tolerance we'll say if it's over say 240 and green is over 240 and blue is over 240 then we're just going to change the red value so we're going to set red to I don't know 255 or something like that and then regardless of if we found it to be backgrounds this detects if it's white or close to white uh, then we're going to set the image which is the one that we set to all completely red at y x so the pixel we're currently working on that's going to be a list of the red value the green value and the blue value that we've read from our file okay so um, I don't know if that's worked or not we shall see uh, yeah I think so um, what we can do now is put a random number in so instead of just 255 all the time we can say random dot rand int and a random number between 0 and 255 there we go so we've got a random background final stage now is to animate this so to constantly choose new random values and keep displaying them all right so we only need to make this red um, image once because that's the one we're going to change but all of this we want to repeat over and over and over again so I'm going to use a while true loop while true which is going to um, just repeat forever and ever and ever and ever uh, and actually um, this copyright information is never going to be displayed it's outside of the, the loop okay um, so at the moment it's displaying a new image each time I don't really want that um, so let's move this out of the loop and when you optimize code optimize just means make as efficient as possible it often means moving stuff out of a loop so it only runs once rather than repeatedly so now it's just um, constantly choosing new values for the background which is okay but it looks a bit um, I don't know how to describe it it looks like it's running too fast so on Netflix or TV or something like that, um, your frame rate um, is how many frames of animation you have per second, uh, which is 24 frames um, per second for, um, for TV or 60 frames per second if you want a nice smooth game. So 1 divided by 24 means you want each frame to be on screen for about 0.04 seconds. So we're just going to slow it down. So we'll say time.sleep 0.04 and then hopefully we've got a nice little animation. Um, so you can adapt this um, to put uh, the name of your teacher on here. Um, I'm going to put some challenges on here that you can work through in the investigate stage for, uh, for the K-Pride activities. Let's have a look. Um, so you can try a different image. So use the bitmap um, code generator for a picture of you or um, a celebrity or whatever you want. You can change the background green um, and blue values to random. So as well as just changing the red values, you can put um, green and blue in there and change them all. Um, or you can make the image fade in from black. That's quite an advanced one. You need an, um, a value here that would then multiply uh, the image data um, by a value between 0 and 1, and that changes over time. So a bit more advanced. I'm not going to talk you through how to do that. The important thing here is to remember that a computer doesn't understand images. It only understands binary data. But if you know how to convert binary into deanery numbers and you know how to convert deanery numbers into colors with red, green and blue, then that's how your computer understands binary um, sorry, images. Um, OK, so do remember um, to work through the activities. You can type out the code as fast as you can. You can tweak and extend the code on here. Um, you can work through the K-Pride activities um, or the extension activity today is all about syntax errors because the number of opportunities you can make to um, make a mistake on here um, is huge if you get um, brackets in the wrong place or commas in the wrong place. So it's important to practice that kind of thing. Thanks ever so much for listening. All the very best. Look after yourselves um, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.